So today we're going to be talking about the pop keys, a mechanical keyboard with a fun little twist made by Logitech. But is it any good? Let's check it out. Starting off with the design, the very first thing that you'll notice is the vibrant color. The Pop Keys comes in three color options. We have Daydream, which is a combination of purple, yellow, and white. Heartbreaker, which is a combination of reds and pinks. And Blast, which is the one that we have here, which is a combination of yellow, black, and gray. I won't lie to you guys, I didn't quite like this at first, but it's grown on me fairly quickly, and now I love it. The color just pops, no pun intended, and it's the first thing that people notice when they see it. I actually had a few coworkers mention how cool they thought the keyboard was when they walked by my desk. The keyboard itself is more on the compact side, but it feels very solid. There's a welcome row of function keys along the top, but there is no number pad, which might be a downfall to some. Instead, Logitech implemented a row of emoji keys, which we'll get into later. Continuing along, there is no height adjustment here. Now, I never had any issues with this aspect, but I know some of you would have preferred some legs on the back to be able to find a more comfortable typing position. Also, the keys aren't backlit, which is unfortunate because it's a nice feature to have, especially at this price point. There are LED indicator lights available though on the caps lock and the three pairing buttons. Lastly, this keyboard has some weight to it. It comes in at 779 grams, which is not a bad thing because it makes the keyboard feel more solid. Although, if you are going to be lugging it around from place to place, it may be something that you'll end up noticing. The keys themselves feature a circular design which some will love and some will hate. Underneath these keys, you'll find some brown switches which offer a more tactile typing experience. The one thing that I'm curious about is the durability of these keys. For one, the letters and numbers sort of look like stickers that have been stamped on. I wonder if over time they will start to wear away. The second thing is that the, with the plastic used on these keycaps, it's something you might have to feel to know what I'm talking about, but it sort of feels like the type of plastic that will get shiny over time. If that's the case, then it will be a huge knock on the design, at least for me. Okay, so the list of features here isn't a long one, but there are a few things to talk about. First, let's talk about the row of function keys. Starting from left to right, Logitech gives you access to three pairing buttons. You can show or hide your desktop. You can screen capture, mic mute, your media keys, and you have voice attacks. Along the right hand side, you have quick access to your favorite emojis. The pop keys comes with eight swappable emoji keys, which you can easily mix and match. You can actually go one step further and assign these keys to any existing emoji that you like. You can do so by using Logitech's Logi Options Plus software, but more on that later. You can also tap on the emoji menu key to bring up the emoji menu and you can choose your favorite emoji that way too. Bluetooth 5.1 is present here and you get a range of 10 meters. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I told you guys the list wasn't long. So if you want to unlock the full potential of the pop keys, it's recommended that you download the Logi Options Plus software. Keep in mind that this is a software that is only compatible with Windows or with Mac OS. So if you wanted to try and download it on your iPad, like me, you won't be able to. The cool thing about this software is that it lets you customize the row of function keys along with your emoji keys. Say for example, you never use a mic. The mute mic button is useless to you then, so we might as well make it do something else. So if you click into it, you get one other option at first. This is to choose your own keyboard shortcut, and you can choose any shortcut you'd like. So if you wanted to do something like Command Shift 3, which is the shortcut for screenshots on Mac OS, you're able to do so. 
Underneath that, you'll notice a drop-down menu called Other Options. This opens up a list of 50 different actions that you can perform with that specific key. It ranges from things like opening your calculator, to turning on Do Not Disturb mode, to even shutting down your computer. So it gives you a lot of options to play around with. With the emoji keys, it's the same idea except it gives you the extra option to select your favorite emoji. The good thing here is that you're not restricted to what's actually displayed on the keycap. So, if you wanted to, you can change the lapping emoji to a soccer ball as an example. Of course, if you don't care about the emojis, you can select any of the 50 actions that we previously mentioned. Other than that, you can see the list of paired products by clicking the easy switch menu and you can open up the settings. In here, you can do things like update to the latest software or factory reset the keyboard or even remove the keyboard from a device. Now the question here is, what's it like to type on? Honestly, it's a lot of fun. The brown switches, like we mentioned earlier, provide a very tactile experience. It's almost like typing on a typewriter. The keys are very responsive, but you have to be careful because they can be unforgiving at times. I don't know if it's because of the circular keycaps or just the height of the keys themselves, but I feel like I made a lot more mistakes on this keyboard at first than I did with any other keyboard. Which is strange though because I'm used to typing on circular keys. My current keyboard at home is the Logitech K380, which is this one right here. It took some time to get used to the keys, but um, don't get me wrong, I still make mistakes here and there, but not as much as I did at first. But yeah, it's just a lot of fun to type on this thing. I love the sounds of the keys, and speaking of which, I'll let you guys have a listen. The emoji keys were fun to use at first, but after a few times, they sort of got played out. Don't get me wrong, it was nice to have quick access to your favorite emoji, but it's, it's more or less of a gimmick than anything else. In other words, I enjoyed using them for the most part, but I wouldn't miss them if they were gone. One thing that I really missed was the number pad. I used the pop keys at work and I didn't realize just how much I used the number pad until I didn't have access to it anymore. I had fun using this keyboard, but had it been full size with a number pad, it would have been so much better. When it comes to battery life, Logitech claims that the pop keys will last up to three years of usage, which is a really long time. It's powered by two AAA batteries, which do come included. Depending on how you look at it, this could be a good or bad thing though. I'm wondering if a built-in rechargeable battery might have been a better option. So how much does this keyboard cost? The regular price for the pop keys is $129 Canadian or $99 US. Now this is a bit more on the pricey side for an average consumer like myself. But the saving grace here is that this thing does go on sale. It was actually just on sale for Black Friday for $30 off, bringing it down to $99 Canadian, which is still expensive, but it's better than nothing. Overall, the Logitech Pop Keys is a good keyboard that's fun to type on, and the design is very eye-catching. The problem here is that it's not for everyone. It's not the best keyboard for productivity, like I wish it was a full-size keyboard with a number pad, or I wish that you were able to use the Logitech software on my iPad, but you can't. And you guys know me, I use my iPad for everything, so it's a major miss for me. The emoji keys are more or less of a gimmick, and it won't really be used by everyone. On the other hand, it is nice to be able to remap the keys using the software to really make it your own, and the battery life is great. It's a little bit on the pricey side for my liking, but if you have the extra cash or if it's on sale, it might be worth looking into. But honestly, at full price, I feel like there might be better options out there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and slap that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comment box down below. 
If you want to keep seeing more tech videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. That's it for me, guys. As always, I'll catch you on the next video.